This video is meant for students just starting out in Rutherford backscattering analysis. I'm going to present an example of what I think is the simplest of situations with Rutherford backscattering, and that is scattering off of a metallic thin film on a substrate. The data I will analyze for you today is from helium ion backscattering off of a gold thin film on a magnesium oxide substrate. The ion arrives normal to the film and scatters at an angle to an alpha detector. In this example, we'll analyze the energy spectrum of the backscattered alpha particles. The gold thin film was made by a collaborator of mine to be about 51 nanometers thick. You can see it in this baggie here. It's on a magnesium oxide substrate, highly polished and very shiny. We will put this on an aluminum ladder, which is used to hold the samples in the backscattering chamber. They fit along this aluminum piece, which attaches at the top. It is fixed with this double stick tape. This is the completely assembled ladder. The gold film is the second from the top, and there's also bare copper standard and samples that our collaborator sent us for analysis. Begin by opening SIM NRA. It's the executable called SIM NRA. Just click on it and it will open up with a blank screen. If you have not been using SIM NRA, it will be completely blank. Otherwise, some of the setup will be pre filled from your previous run. So let's start by bringing in data. You go to File, Read Spectrum Data, and it has to be ASCII format. You may have a KMAC data set from the detector output that has to be converted into two column ASCII, and so you need to go ahead and do that first. I'm going to assume you have two column ASCII. Find the file, and in the format in our laboratory, the files have these long names that begin with the letter O. They may have different names for you. Go ahead and open the file, and we have the gold backscattered spectrum. The horizontal axis is the channel number, or the energy, in KEV, and the vertical axis is the number of counts. We have a little bit of backscattering at the low energies, and we have a lot of backscattering right up at about 2600 KEV. That's the gold peak, and what you see at the low energy is the substrate. This has to be populated with setup information now. You have these two icons here. The actual experiment setup is this one. And let me put in some information. Helium-4 isotopes. The energy that we have been using is 2886. If you don't know exactly what it is, you can figure out what this energy is by looking at where your edges are. The geometry inside the chamber is described in this next section. Incident angle is zero degrees in our experiment. The alpha particle beam is normal to the sample. Then there's the exit angle of 11.8 and the scattering angle of 168.2. It's no accident that those add up to 180 degrees. The beam comes down the beam tube, hits the sample normal, and backscatters it. With the alpha detector is fixed in place permanently at an angle of 11.8 degrees from that incident line. And so that never changes. Yes, they add up to 180 degrees. Uh, SIM NRA will make sure that this angle, 168.2, plus this angle, 11.8, plus the angle alpha, which is the angle of incidence, add up to something that makes sense. The alpha detector needed to be calibrated. Now, we do calibrations with an alpha source. I'll make a separate video showing that. There's an offset and an energy per channel. The energy versus channel number for the alpha detector has a y-intercept at minus 62 keV and a slope of 5.9573 keV per channel. So those are put here and they get changed every experiment. Particle times steradian is the incoming particles times the solid angle subtended by the detector. That's going to be a free fit parameter in your analysis. Let's well, start off with 4 times 10 to the 10th and we'll see where it goes from there. I never have to change the energy resolution. We have a detector with a resolution of 35 keV. Now you can play around with this energy spread of the incident beam. We'll talk a little bit about how it might influence the spectrum later. The next icon sets up the sample. It's this layering tool. And since it's a thin film sample, I'll have two layers. Layer one is the gold film, which has a concentration of 100%. And layer two is the MgO substrate, which should have a concentration of 50% Mg and 50% oxygen. Thickness is measured in atoms per square centimeter. That requires some discussion because what you want to know is how many nanometers thick your film is. So our particular sample is a gold film. We're told about 50-51 nanometers thick on a magnesium oxide substrate. 
A gold film is made up of gold atoms. They're in a nice lattice. If I wanted to know how many atoms are in a square centimeter of this film, that would be the piece of information that is in sim NRA, atoms per square centimeter. So if I imagine a circle, one square centimeter in area, the number of atoms beneath it is the information that you put into sim NRA. Let's try to visualize this. Suppose you're a grasshopper sitting on this one square centimeter of area and you are counting how many atoms are beneath your feet. That's the atoms per square centimeter that goes into sim NRA. So for particular material, that will correspond to a particular thickness. Let's look at this homogeneous gold film. There are a certain number of atoms per square centimeter under your feet. First thing to argue is that the atoms per cubic centimeter in gold times that thickness is the atoms per square centimeter. Do you see that? Take the atoms per cubic centimeter in gold, multiply by this thickness, and you have the atoms per square centimeter under your feet. The units come out and the argument makes sense. Let's break down this atoms per cubic centimeter into quantities that we can know. For example, grams per cubic centimeter is the density. Grams per atom is the molar mass divided by Avogadro's number. And we now have an expression for atoms per square centimeter. Let's put numbers in. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. There's Avogadro's number. There's the molar mass of gold, 196.967 grams per mole. And T, put, multiply all these numbers, and you've got an expression. Atoms per square centimeter is this number times T, the thickness. Now we can find the thickness of the gold layer if we have the atoms per square centimeter. In sim NRA, the units are 10 to the 15th atoms per square centimeter. 10 to the 22 is 10 to the 7 times 10 to the 15th. So atoms per square centimeter is 5.9 times 10 to the 7th times the thickness in centimeters in units of 10 to the 15th atoms per square centimeter. Write down this box and let's go back to sim NRA. If it's a 51 nanometer thick film, the atoms per square centimeter will be 300 per that equation. You can check it yourself. And that is the target model. We can go ahead and take a look at it by clicking fast to get a calculated spectrum. And we have the simulated spectrum in blue. It doesn't match very well. It's narrower than gold peak, so I'm going to have to increase the thickness a little bit. The substrate seems to have a higher simulated count rate than the actual measured substrate. So we need to make a few changes here. Let's begin by just increasing the thickness, maybe by 10%. And now you see the peak lines up better. Now it's a very good agreement at the actual peak up here. Where we still have disagreement is at the tails of the gold peak, and the substrate is too strong. There are ways to deal with this. This tail on the low energy side of a peak could be due to roughness in the substrate. I'll demonstrate how that works. You go to layer and substrate roughness, and we can just turn it on. It will be Lorentzian, and we'll just try this 25 degree angle in the roughness. And see how it just comes right in. Okay, that implies that might be it. It does nothing but the high energy tail. But we still have a problem, and that is that the count rate is too high in the spectrum. In fact, if we take a look up close, it misses by a lot. Don't worry about this low energy stuff, we'll correct that later. But it misses by way too much. So I'm gonna suggest that this is not the issue. I don't expect it anyway because the substrate is extremely polished. So we have to think knowledgeably about the sample. It's a very smooth substrate. So turning on layer and substrate roughness made no sense. And it gives us a spectrum that really makes no sense. I'm going to suggest there's something else that makes more sense based on the fact that I know the substrate is smooth. I see right here what might be a little bit of a second peak. And I realize what's going on here is diffusion of gold into the MGO. And that's what we're going to model next. The effect of diffusion is seen by changing the model a little bit to include a diffusion layer. So we have the gold film with all these gold atoms on a magnesium oxide substrate. But some of those gold atoms diffuse into the MGO, and also some of the magnesium can diffuse into the gold. You have a diffusion layer, and it's inhomogeneous, although that can be very tedious to model. I'm going to model it by having two layers here, one which has a little less gold and a little bit of magnesium, and one which has a little bit of gold and a lot more magnesium, and that's going to be our diffusion layer. 
return to our SimNRA model that only has one gold layer on top of an MGO substrate and insert in some new layers. So that layer one is the gold layer. Layer two is a substrate. Click insert and we have a new layer. Give it three elements. Make up a thickness, let's say 100. Put in the elements, oxygen, magnesium, and gold. Give them some concentrations. We'll stick with something like uh, about twice as much oxygen as magnesium for some reason. 0.22, and then just click uh, the box for gold. And so that's a layer. I'm guessing what that intermediate layer contains. Let's add one more. It's probably a lot thicker because the gold is just really thinned out. So I might say 500 for the thickness. And I'm just guessing on these compositions. We're going to allow the optimizer to tell us. To begin optimization using this fit icon. First, let's take a look at what we just put in here with, by clicking fast. It actually looks a little bit better at this low energy tail. Each layer is fit separately in SimNRA by clicking on fit. And you see you choose the layer. And you have four free fit parameters you can rely on. I typically use particle stradians and layer composition. I've already gotten the energy right. You see how the, the edges are lining up correctly. And so I know the energy is in there correctly. Layer roughness we don't like to use. And it makes for a very slow fit. And it's probably not physical. And then you put in the fit regions. We have spectrum down at the low end. I'll say from maybe from 60 to 250. And then I'll add a region. And we'll fit about 430 to 470. We'll do 100 max iterations. And we'll let set the accuracy to a little bit more 001. And if you click fit, the only thing that can change is the thickness. And watch how it changes. It changed a little bit. The particle stradian can change too. We'll see how that changes as we move along. You can monitor particle stradians. Let's go to layer two. I just added it, so I need to OK a few things. Now it says failed to reach desired accuracy. That does not mean the fitting has failed. What that means is that this 001 that I put in for fit accuracy is very rigorous. And that's what I want, so that it does all of the iterations. And also you can keep an eye on how particle stradian changes each time. That was layer three, and we'll do layer four, substrate. And now just keep going through it, one layer at a time. And again, if it says fit failed to reach desired accuracy, that's actually a good thing because it means you've got all of your iterations in. So I'm dissatisfied with something here. Let me go to plot, rescale Y. You can see how the fit, which is blue, is not coming up all the way to the height. That is a consequence that the particle stradian is not coming out right. For these first three layers, one, two, and three, I'm going to eliminate this first fit region. And just fit channel 430, 470. So it will ignore all of the substrate, and the particle stradian will match up to it. I think this is about as good as we're going to get it. Having these diffusion layers resulted in a good alignment with the low energy part of the tail. Zoom in on that. And you see really good lining up. What we don't have good alignment with is the high energy end. And here's another thing you need to make sure about. You can close fitting, the target window is open, you have to click OK. Don't click Cancel because it will reset. And I'm looking at this and there are a couple of things I don't like. First, I don't like the fact that I can't tell what's what. If you go to Show Spectrum, Show Simulated Element Spectrum, you see each element individually. This is the magnesium peak. There seems to be extra magnesium. That's not a very physical claim. So I'm going to manually adjust that. Don't trust the fitting to give you something that's physical. So you see that you have 21 magnesium to 74 oxygen in layer 2. And there's 36 to 62 and then back to 29 to 70. I think layer 3 has too much magnesium. And I'm going to manually adjust that and redo the fit. Now watch what happens to this horn on the end of the magnesium peak. It's gone. I feel much better about that. I'm going to keep it that way. What I still don't like about this fit is the oxygen peak isn't lining up very nicely. 
and the upper tail of the gold peak still isn't matching the simulation. The measured peak has extra counts at the high energies, which is not part of any material science model that I can think of. Let's back off and look at everything here by going rescale y-axis. So the substrate is much weaker than the gold film, which right away makes me think it's not possible to get really accurate fitting in the substrate area. So I'm not too freaked out about the fact that the magnesium and the oxygen don't quite line up with the measurements. The gold really dominates the spectrum, and the only thing I really dislike then is what's left in the high energy range. There are three things that can cause the tail in the low energy range. The first is the action that we took, which is diffusion of the gold ions into the MGO, which I believe it is. The second, which I rule out because I know it's a very well-polished substrate, is surface roughness at the substrate interface to the film. And the third, which we didn't do anything with, is this energy spread of incident beam. Now, if you give it some value here, like say 35, which is the resolution of the detector, watch what happens to these tails. There is a noticeable improvement on the upper energy tail, and the lower energy tail got kicked out a little bit because now there are two effects contributing to the lower energy tail, energy spread as well as diffusion of ions. But look at what happened to the height of the simulated peak. It came way down. In order to bring that back up, I need to increase the particles to radians. But if I do that, raise them from 4.2 to 4.7, if I do that, it'll measure up really nicely there, but now look at what the substrate is doing. Now it's way off. So the model where you assume that there's an energy spread of an incident beam gives a worse result than the model where there's diffusion of gold into the substrate. So I'm going with the diffusion hypothesis, which not only gives a better fit, but makes more physical sense. However, I still don't have an explanation for the high energy tail in the distribution except to argue that it is an artifact of measurement. It's not an interesting thing. It can't be because of material science, because what it's saying is that you're getting backscattering at an energy that alpha particles can't have when they backscatter off of gold. So it's associated with the detector and not with the actual material system. We can get an idea about how deeply the gold has diffused into the magnesia substrate by doing the same analysis we did to try to determine the gold thickness. Only now we do it with magnesium oxide. Again, it's finding the atoms per square centimeter that we have for each of those two layers, layer 2 and layer 3, but now it's magnesium oxide that determines that. If we still have to find atoms per square centimeter, which is a little different now than it was for gold, magnesium oxide has two atoms per formula unit. Density, 3.6 grams per cubic centimeter of magnesium. So Avogadro's number refers to the number of formula units in a mole, not the number of atoms in a mole when you have more than one atom per formula unit. And we have to divide Avogadro's number by the molecular mass, 40.3, and then multiply by two atoms per formula unit. That's the only difference in the approach. And then we have an expression for the thickness of a magnesium oxide layer in terms of atoms per square centimeter. Take all those numbers that we determined from the sim NRA analysis. Layer 1 was entirely gold, so it's 330 times 10 to the 15th atoms per square centimeter converted to a thickness of 55.9 nanometers. What seems to be the case is that diffusion into layer 2 and layer 3 of gold into the magnesia is pretty extensive in depth, though not in percent. Layer 2 has a physical thickness of 4.2 microns and contains 4% gold. And layer 3 is way too uncertain to say anything. Maybe another 5 microns may have a gold percent of 0.9%. We need to have that third layer in order to fully round out the lower energy tail of the gold peak. But saying exactly what it is is pretty difficult to do. But what we can say is that it does appear that gold has diffused into the magnesia. And that proves to be a more believable theory than substrate roughness or energy spread in the beam. And once again, I'm Steve Armard with the Hope College Physics Department, and I would like to thank Professor Paul DeYoung from the Hope Ion Beam Analysis Laboratory, as well as my collaborator, Xiaoxing Shi from Temple University, who provided that gold sample. And as always, none of this would be possible without the innovative work in programming SIM NRA to begin with, and so we always reference that in all of our work.